Hi, I'm Keegan Gerhardt. Uh, we are here at my little restaurant in Denver, Colorado, D-Bar. It's actually called D-Bar Desserts, not well named, because we do lunch and dinner, but we are kind of dessert specialists. So uh, I'm gonna start with something actually that can do both things, a recipe that can go both ways. The French term is pâté choux. Um, don't be intimidated by that. It's actually kind of a cute little name. Pat is like the name for all doughs. Pat dough, whatever, dough of a choux is the French word for cabbage because you'll see these little these little items will come out looking like cute little cabbages. So American words for what pat a choux can make, cream puff, cheese puff, eclair, long john, all that dough comes from pat a choux. All professional chefs and pastry chefs, they make this ahead, they bake it, they freeze it, they pull it out, and they fill it as needed. And that's what we're gonna do. This is something that you can have tucked away in your freezer. Uh, listen, if you wanna be a true gourmet, savory or pastry, this is a little bit of ammunition you need to have in your arsenal of recipes. You need to have pâté choux because it's just a no-brainer. People come from out of town, unexpected guests. You fill it with whipped cream, you make a cream puff. You dip it in chocolate, split it and fill it with ice cream, you have profiterole. You don't even do anything to it but sprinkle cheese on it and dip it in a yummy cheesy sauce, you have gougere. One of the things that if you go to any Michelin three-star restaurant, they'll probably give you as, a, as an amuse-bouche, as a first course, right? So this can go the most haute cuisine, the most kids over for, for a snack in the day kind of a deal. It's super versatile. I love this recipe. So here we go. People think it takes a long time to boil water. It actually doesn't. It takes a long time to heat a pot insulated by water. So anything that you make, mac and cheese, anything that you boil, potatoes, pasta, anything, heat your pan first, really hot. You should hear it when the water hits it. That will cut your boiling time more than in half. And if you want to get super fancy and buy yourself a, an induction burner, it gets faster again. Equal amounts of milk and water. Like I said, nice hot pan. Now, you'll see recipes with all water, perfectly fine. I think this has a little bit better mouthfeel, a little bit better overall texture, yeah? Could be all milk, I think it's a little overkill. Could be all water, I like half and half. As I said, I'm making kind of a large recipe so that you can kind of store it up for the winter, as you, if you will, you know, just kind of have it around. Uh, you can cut this in half. This recipe cuts in half very easily. Don't even be afraid of that, okay? So this is gonna get hot quite quickly. I'm gonna turn it all the way up and uh, we're gonna add butter into it. This is just simple uh, Tillamook unsalted butter. Cubing it up helps it melt a little bit more quickly, but it's not necessary. Now, could you leave the butter out? You could, but why would you? Butter makes everything better. <laughs> there's, I don't think there's anything low calorie about a profiterole. But here's the cool thing about profiteroles, about cream puffs, about pate choux, is if you look at this recipe, we have, we have sea salt, sugar, you can even leave the sugar out if you want to go only the cheesy route, if you don't want to do cream puffs or profiteroles. Salt and sugar help things have brown color in the um, oven. You don't want to leave the sugar all the way out. There's not enough in here for it to really taste like sweetness, just enough to kind of give it a little balance. Um, all right, so this is going to come to a boil. In the meantime, it's super simple, like we said. Milk and water, butter's melting. You can see it melting already. We're going to put all of our sugar and our salt inside so it dissolves. Now, if you cook at home, you're going to recognize this method. This is the same way you might make a base for a souffle. This is the same way, it's called a panade at the end of it when we add the flour in. It's kind of like a, an exaggerated roux, and that'll make sense to you here in a second when we add this flour inside. I use uh, all-purpose flour and I use bread flour. If you only have all-purpose flour at home, totally fine. Just use all all-purpose flour, it's okay. Bread flour has a little bit more gluten in it, and so bread flour gives it a little bit more structure. Because here's the thing about this recipe, is if you look at it, there's no leavening in it. There's no reason why it should puff, right? There's no reason for it to go anywhere. But it does puff because of this weird little situation with these eggs at the end. So, we're almost there. Just about melted and dissolved. You wanna give this a stir a time or two because uh, lactose, some proteins inside of milk, they kind of tend to want to stick to the bottom of the pot if you don't stir it. The salt and sugar in there helps with that a little bit. But just give it a stir, yeah? All right, see that just about to boil? I'm gonna turn that off, honestly. Or I'm gonna turn it way down. No need, scalding's enough. Don't need to cook the crap out of it, right? Just gonna get it nice and hot. We're gonna add in our flour. You'll read all kinds of things about the flour part. Add it a little bit at a time, add it all at once. 
Don't add a teeny bit that's going to be lumpy. It's just going to be lumpy. See, it's pretty lumpy looking. All my flour is in now. So now when you start to see that all the liquid is kind of gone, right? And you kind of have this shaggy mass. This is the time when you kind of want to get serious. When is it done? How do you know when you should stop cooking it on the stove? I call it rhino skin. Have you ever seen a rhino? Rhino skin meaning like kind of smooth with occasional oddball wrinkles, right? It starts to leave a little trail on the bottom. You can see down inside there, it's starting to leave a little like, what would I call that? A panade skid mark kind of a thing? That's what you want right there. Yeah? False, it's, it's one mass. Nice, shiny, smooth, supple, big wrinkles. We're done. This is good. Let's transfer this. Whole shaggy mass. Looks like a lot, but honestly, when you start piping this out into things, it's gonna go pretty quick. It's not that many. Plus, which this is not a one little cream puff kind of a dish, right? People eat one of these and then they eat three more. Cheese puffs, they'll eat like a dozen. So you gotta have some on hand. On the mixer she goes. We're gonna use a paddle. Whisk will be much too sticky. Whisks are for putting air inside something. We're not trying to put air in here. We're just trying to paddle it together, right? So, we're gonna start this going on kind of low, medium low. You can see all that steam coming out. It's too hot to add egg right now, right? If we add my egg in right now, even if I add it slowly, it's just gonna be scrambled eggs. So that's my tip number two for pat shoe. About the time you stop seeing the steam billowing out of that bowl is about the time that you can start to add egg, yeah? So check it out, this mass has changed pretty dramatically, yeah? Where we had a beautiful, smooth, sort of a uh, rhino skin situation. Now it's a little shaggy, it's a little shiny. Some of the fats come out, that's the butter that we put inside before. If you want to get crazy, pastry chefs are kind of nerdy. I like this. This is an infrared digital thermometer, plus or minus one degree within four feet. Slightly on the hot, hot side, we'll see what happens. A negative time-ish. It's good. You know it's not good if you pour your first egg in and the egg white turns white. Like when you eat scrambled eggs or egg scrambled egg whites, that's bad. Then it's too hot and you must arret. You must stop immediately and wait for it to cool. But we're good. Now look, two eggs and it's already come together now. Once it starts to get cool, you can go a couple eggs at a time. You don't have to be too aggro about the one egg at a time thing. In the beginning, yes. This is the point of the recipe where you need to take a little bit of care. You really don't want to force the fat in because this is kind of where the magic happens of that, of that souffle situation, that puffiness comes from these eggs being properly integrated into this panade, yeah? So, all of our eggs are inside. It's about 18 eggs, yeah? A pound, 12 ounces. Eggs tend to be about an ounce, ounce and a half, whole eggs. Sometimes there can be some variance about how many eggs you put in, but honestly, this recipe I've used for a long time turned out perfect. If you're not at altitude like I am, it might call for one less. Nice, tight, beautiful little, I don't know why, French people call that kind of a bird beak. Since we want to have some versatility, we've got our dough ready. We are going to take some out and fold in some cheese and a little bit of spice. That will be our savory. Now, that's not imperative, quite frankly. You could just sprinkle cheese on top at the end of the baking process. I'll show you that later. Or make a yummy cheese sauce with some killer chili cheese. Either way, we're going to do both, because why not? I put some, uh, I'm going to put just a little bit of this in. This is a little bit of uh, Toma Colby Jack with some chive. You could put some other kind of herb in there if you wanted to. But if you put in dried herbs, don't tell me. Because I know where your dried herbs came from. From like your grandma's house from two Thanksgivings ago. Not delicious. Nobody likes pinches as measurements. But a pinch of cayenne. I know, by the way, did you know that a pinch is a sixteenth of a teaspoon and a dash is an eighth of a teaspoon? Google it. I like cheddar. White and yellow cheddar mix. Oh, I don't know. For half this recipe, for the savory part, about six ounces of cheese, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, use the force. Foldy, foldy. Oh my gosh. Good enough? 
Well, nothing is, as long as nothing shaggy is hanging out, you're good. You could do the Sandra Lee trick, I suppose, and cut the corner off a Ziploc bag, but that's really MacGyverish. Just invest 25 cents in a piping bag, won't you? And for the love of goodness, don't use a cloth bag that you wash and you clean. It never gets clean. It holds bacteria. It's a nasty bacteria situation. Get a disposable bag. They're available everywhere. Any store has them because everybody thinks they're a cake decorator now, right? So we put a little cheese, a little spice, a little love into this uh, feta shoe mix. And then we still have our plain feta shoe mix so that we can make two different recipes, right? Again, it's not necessary to put cheese inside, but I just think it makes it a little yummier. And I'm not a guy that can really handle a lot of spice, so don't be intimidated by the cayennes that I put inside. It's just enough to bring it more towards the savory side. You might get a little bit of a tingle at the end, but it's not spicy. All right, so little plain pastry tip, star tips don't really work out well. The tips burn. I like to go plain. Then you're just gonna make uh, some little cute little balls. You kind of want to cut them off on the top. Sometimes the cheese prevents it from being smooth. Don't sweat that. You can come back later and fix it. Kind of like press, stop, twirl, press, stop, twirl. One of the things too, a couple of mistakes. Don't go from the edge because you'll make it long, right? Don't go on the surface because it'll squirt out, right? Like it'll be flat. You want to be just slightly off the mat. Press, stop, swirl it off. It looks like it's easy. You're going to do it. It's not going to look like this. Don't sweat it. And after you do a bunch, you'll be a pro. We're going to start off eight to 10 minutes in a very hot oven. I'm going to go on a deck oven originally in the beginning. It doesn't matter if you don't have one, but go high, like 450 for maybe eight to 10 minutes. Halfway through, I'm going to turn the pan. Yeah. Then I'm going to finish it off in a convection oven. Now for you, if you only have one oven, what you can do is move it from the top shelf to the bottom shelf, lower the temperature and leave the door open for a little bit for that next five minute moment. All that heat inside your oven is gonna dissipate and it'll kind of give you that cool oven, it won't be the shock. What you're looking for is a beautiful golden brown little baby cabbage. Right before these are finished, we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of this on top so that this um, jack cheese and chive mixture melts on top and you can clearly tell that it's a cheese pop. I like garnishes to indicate what's going on inside. If something's got nuts in it, I think there should be nuts on top, right? It shouldn't be guesswork about what you're eating. So, cheese puffs, cream puffs, out of the oven, right? They turned out pretty beautifully. You can see, little baby cabbage. Now, if you wanted to get crazy out of control, <laughs> I guess you could take these cheese puffs that have cheese in them and on them, and you could fill them with cheese too. For me, it's a little bit too much. I kind of like the negative space and I like the dipping situation. So we're gonna have a cheese puffs. We're gonna pull a couple of cute ones that we're just gonna fill and dust with powdered sugar like a classic cream puff. I'm gonna pick a couple of taller ones for my profiteroles, just so I have a lot of room for ice cream and chocolate. What we do for a dipping sauce for Gougere here is we take our mac and cheese sauce, which I give you the recipe later on, in, a, in, a, in our mac and cheese recipe. And we add some of the uh, three-year extra sharp white cheddar into that. And we add a little bit of extra roasted garlic to it as well. Yeah, so that is a yummy dipping sauce. So that's easy, come on, this is a no-brainer. Cheese puffs, cute little garnish, you see it's cheesy? Oh yeah, in a moment, I'll eat one. Okay, next, cream puff is the easiest, right? You can cut them in half, but it's never as cute as a cream puff when they're cut in half and you can see the cream goozing out, oozing out. I like to put, give myself a little starter hole with a piping tip. You can see super hollow inside. That's what you want. A little whipped cream, a little Chantilly cream. Put them in. Fill, fill, fill. It'll take more than you think. The goal is that the profiterole, they're super light when they're empty. When you're filling it, you want to fill it all the way up. Use, use the nozzle to make some space if you don't have space, right? And you want to fill it all the way up. And when you're done filling it, it should feel heavy for its size. Kind of like a really ripe melon or something like that. Because trust me, the people want the love inside. They want the cream. They're gonna, you're going to tell them they're going to get a cream puff. They want cream, right? A little powdered sugar on there. There you go. Simple cream puff. Recipe number two, off a pat of shoe. 
Number three, one of my favorites, Perfiterol. This is kind of an Italian classic. Yeah? We're going to cut them first because it gets really messy if you dip first. <laughs> it's going to happen to you one day, trust me. We're going to cut them in half. Ideally, you would not cut inside your hand, right? I'm a trained professional. A nice serrated knife gives you your best chance of cutting through that peripheral cleanly. So look at all that great negative space. Beautiful, billowy. I love it. Slightly damp. I just, just, just baked these. Not all the way dry, but that's okay for me because we're going to make cute little ice cream sandwiches out of these, yeah? So, we cut our profiteroles, but before we fill them with ice cream, we're going to dip the tops. Little jiggle, little swirl so you don't get messy. That will be delicious. And then the fun part, the ice cream. Got to get some of those chips in there. That's the good part, I think. Chunks. Because these obviously don't have a lot of texture, right? So the chunks inside of here is what makes me love this Tillamooka Espresso Mocha ice cream on the inside of a profiterole. Yes. Here you go. Little handmade profiteroles, pretty simple. And if you're feeling cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, you could actually dip that in some more chocolate. There you go, one simple recipe, three completely different items to eat. Be your own chef, be your own pastry chef, that's what I say.